Let's see. Hello, precious people. I'm Jacqueline Parks and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about a very serious subject, which is scammers. I almost got scammed, y'all. Hold on a second. My wire is like way far away. Actually, I know what I'll do. I'm going to plug that. I don't need to have that plugged in. Anyways, good morning. Hey, Linda Ball. Good morning. Thank you so much. Um, I love you guys so much for joining. Um, so yeah, today is going to be a little bit more of a serious subject matter to talk about, but I will be painting for you. Um, here's my here's my book that I am going to do a tutorial from. This is from Paul Clark's um, book. This is his book, and I have done several from his book already. Let me show you which ones I've done already. I've done this one, which was super easy to do. He has step-by-step. Step. He even shows you how to make um, little people, how to watercolor them. So I've done that one. I have done, maybe I should do this one. I was going to do a different one. Look at his tree. Very pretty. He's got very beautiful style for painting. Um, this one I've done. It was a small painting I've done. Um, so yes, I've done several. I've done this one. In fact, this one I sold not this year, not 2023, but in 2022 at a craft show. I've sold that, the one I did. And then Amanda made it too. We both followed it. Hers turned out amazing. I didn't want to sell hers because I want to keep it. This is the one we're planning to do today. Um... There's a, a tutorial on skies, on painting a door. This one I did also, I did a little video of it, I think, on my other channel because I wasn't sure if I was going to start a brand new channel to just focus on stuff like this. But you know what I ended up doing was making that channel all about my animals. Oh, thank you, Linda. This is very pretty, too. I might want to paint this sometime because it's super easy. All his tutorials are super easy. He even gives you tips on how to draw more accurately and um, how to get the shading. He's real, it's a great book. If you haven't gotten this yet and you're an artist and learning about everything, he's got a section on color theory. It's just, it's a great book. And Y'all, we need to be praying for him because recently I found out he had surgery and he hasn't been doing too well. So we need to pray for him to heal and to get better. He even missed his um, his trip to La Gomera. Um, and, you know, I would love to go to one of his retreats where he teaches people how to paint in beautiful, like, vacation settings. But... Um, you know, getting over to Europe right now is just kind of hard, and so I don't really want to do it. So, Linda, let me know if you can hear me okay, if the sound is good, because I'm using a different microphone. I'm not using my MacBook. So I just want to make sure that the sound is good before I move on. I know I should probably have some kind of headphones so that I can hear myself, but I'm not that tech savvy yet. Okay, and I'm, I'm just kind of going as low minimum as possible. But yeah, let me know, Linda, if you can if you can hear me okay. The sound is great. Perfect. Yay, thank you, Lord. Um, look at my earrings, Linda. Can you see? These are an original Laura Mitten for your ears only. I was helping her set up her website. And you know what? They're, I call these my chosen earrings because they got the little fishtail and the teal. And I am wearing a chosen t-shirt today. Guess what comes out in theaters? Guess what comes out in theaters? I think February 1st. Chosen season four. I think it's just episode one. 
maybe episode two. I don't know. I haven't been paying that close attention. But I'm excited because I can't wait. I can't wait. I love the TV series. It's amazing. It's been on regular TV now. I've watched it on the app, um, things like that. But it's beautiful, beautiful story. And it, it brings to life the um, the dis- the disciples' lives, like how they lived. And some of them, they weren't perfect. Well, none of them were perfect, but they started off as sinners. And when they met Jesus, he said, follow me. And so that's how it, it, it starts. It shows you their journey with him. So, oh yeah, you love these? Are they beautiful? I love them. So she, she and I are going to be at the, um, Gulf, Gulf Coast Music Hall in Foley, Alabama. We are going to be there February 4th. So that's this coming Sunday, I think. What is today? Wee. What is today? January 29th. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a Sunday. Um, so I hope if you guys are local that you will come and see us both. We're going to be set up. It's an indoor thing. It's the big red barn. You can't miss it. Go down the express um, the expressway towards Gulf Shores and you will see it on the right and it's that big red building and so I'm excited I've never been there before and done this um, kind of setup so we'll see how it goes um, but I think Laura Minton she's the one who um, signed up for it so I hope that we have a I hope we have a lot of good um, you know traffic coming in so lots of people coming in but um so anyways um let me just tell you something let me show you something because this is what is super important for artists if you're an artist or even if you're just someone who wants to sell on like Facebook marketplace you need to be aware there's scammers out there trying to take your money um Yes, Linda, we are both sharing one booth. So it'll be one booth, the two of us, which she said was fine to do. And I'm like, okay, good. Because some of those arts and craft shows, they don't let you share. Um, and they say that in the rules. So, um, But this is the one that I guess is allowing sharing. I know St. Lawrence has allowed my group to be in one booth. So that was good. Actually, I've been doing two booths now at St. Lawrence. Hmm. But let's look at this scammer. <clears throat> so first off, her name is Michelle Tracy with no E in Michelle. So I should have I should have known right then and there. Not that people don't have weird spellings of their name, but just sometimes that's a that's a clue that you should look into it further. And what I did is I was so excited that somebody wanted to hire me for a commission that I didn't even think about it. I just sent a reply and said, yeah, it usually takes about a week. So as you can see on here, it says, I'd like you to draw a picture of my son's pet for him. Went through your page, and I think I just fell in love with your artwork. I want you to draw a picture of his pet which will have his name written below the drawing. Okay, and there's a picture of cats, right? The cat. So there's two different pictures. So you're like, okay, yeah, that's a good one. And I said, oh, what a cutie, right? And told them the price and all that. So they said, good to hear that. Since your price for the drawing is $100 for 8 by 10 and I'm willing to draw up to four pictures. The price will be 400 if I'm right. Kindly send me your PayPal, email, and the username for me to process the payment out once. See, that kind of wording is weird. Also, the fact that they want four drawings of the same pet for their son. That's weird too, don't you think? Use logic, right? So I'm like trying to clarify in the next comment saying you want four drawings of the cat or one that's huge, because I didn't understand. And they said, I want four drawing of the dog. Okay, that's a picture of a cat, and they said they want four drawing of the dog. Y'all, 
that that is I was done after that I'm like they don't even know what they sent me they have so many of these scams going to so many artists they can't even keep track <clears throat> so if you're an artist please 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 I know people contacting you saying they want to buy your art is going to be the best day of your life you're going to be like oh my gosh someone loves my art and I'm not saying that nobody loves your art and that they're all scammers. What I'm saying is look at the wording, look at their name, look at the amount, look at how they want to send it to you, look at how they're asking for information from you. So what I did is I went on the internet, you know, Google, and I typed in artist scams with PayPal because obviously... I was trying to figure out how are they going to scam me with PayPal. Here's someone's um, whole little um, description of their story, what happened. And just the gist of it was they sent the person their PayPal email and all that. And guess what? They sent money, but they didn't. They said, oh, I sent you money. And they were, and so this artist is like, I didn't see it. And he's like, well, you need to send me blah, blah, blah. And then I'll send you blah, blah, blah or something. Anyways, they ended up almost stealing $100 from her. And the fact that her commission was only 40 bucks, and they wanted to send her like $300. I think that's the amount too. It's like you quote them some amount and they want to pay you more. Because obviously they need to make it a big amount of money. Some of them are even like $2,500. And some of them scam artists who have artwork for sale and they want to buy a certain artwork. Not just commission them, but just buy it. And so by the time you send them the art, their check, their PayPal, whatever has bounced. Yeah, why would I send them my PayPal? Um, so another person I actually... Um, another person I actually uh, was reading their story about being scammed or almost scammed was that they um, they were asked for their email for their PayPal and they said well give me your email and I'll send you a request for money and they wouldn't reply so that's how you can also weed out those scammers you can weed them out by Asking for their information. Now, I screwed up, I think, and sent them my phone number and said, text me. Um, but we haven't had any more um, interaction. And plus, I went on to Facebook and Googled their name and their profile. And it looks like they're a porn star or something because their pictures are like half naked. And all their friends are mostly men. So I'm kind of like, hmm, not that... Porn stars don't want artwork, but what I'm saying is like, just go see if they're legit. Um, you know, because there's a lot of people who say, "Oh, I love your art. Can I, can I buy an NFT?" I don't know what NFT is, but don't fall for that either. I think they're trying to scam in a different way, and I just don't think it's worth it. Um, I like to deal with people I know. I like to deal with people friends of friends even but now I'm like ooh, I am alert is on what are you saying Linda let me see um you'll explain after they say that accidentally took too much oh yeah yeah and you need to pay them back yep but they really didn't take anything yep and that's a fake account yep totally so you got to be careful out there all right, so that's my little spiel on scammers. So um, let me see. Do you want to watch me paint now? Let's watch me paint something pretty. Um, I need some paper. Let's see. You know how I've switched to this paper. It's so nice, y'all. I love it. I love it. Um, but let's do a big one. Who knows? Maybe I'll, um, maybe I'll frame it. Oh my gosh, guess what, Linda? I went and got a frame for my giant painting that I'm doing. And I got the mat. I bought the mat. I bought the frame. I've got to put it in the frame. And then I'll be able to um, take it to the 
store down in Foley, and they're going to put it on their walls for sale. So that'll be awesome. All right, you see this is a crazy lighting, but it's going to be okay. All right, so let's see. How do we follow a tutorial? This is super easy, y'all. <clears throat> so we're going to open up this one. Let me see if I can find the page. I should have bookmarked it with a little piece of paper, but I thought I thought it'd be easy to just flip and find. Okay, so we're gonna follow him step by step. And I like this one because I don't think it, it's gonna take too too long for me. So stage one, it says mix up a watery blue and a warm yellow made of 80% yellow, 20% red, and your Payne's gray. You know, that's how I got into Payne's gray, Paul Clark. Because Payne's Gray is just awesome. It's an awesome thing. Let me see if I have any paintbrushes that I like. Um, he sells paintbrushes that I would love to have someday. I have not painted the picture yet. So I do it live. You'll watch me paint it. <clears throat> so that's what's going to be cool. I know I'll, every time I go live, my voice starts to go. And I don't know if it's just because, you know. I'm talking and my voice is like you're not used to talking we're not talking <laughs> ah. so basically he wants us to mix it all up so I'm gonna do this watery blue that's already kind of on here and that's not as watery as I want so there's some more wateriness so and he wants me to make a warm yellow. So over here, on here, I've already got this yellow and a little bit of red. And we'll put a little bit of Payne's Gray in there. A little bit of that. This is my Payne's Gray. So look at that color. I think that's what he wants, that color. It looks pretty similar to that, don't you think? I think so. Oh, did you all see that? That's crazy. Get back over there. Don't tip your palette when you're live, people. Anyways, I'm going to push that over there. And I haven't been taping my my um, paper down. For some reason, I'm, I'm experimenting more with this kind of thing. Um, it says, so now we're going to... Um, Take my largest brush and completely wet with clean water the top two-thirds and allow it to soak in for a few moments. A few moments. Oh, I've finished painting it, the picture for the shop. And it's actually in my car right now, so I can't show it to you at the moment. But I will, I will post a picture of it at some point. Okay, so two-thirds. What is two-thirds? One, two, three. So these, starting here and up, I'm going to wet all this with super clean water. Isn't this super clean water? Look at it. Say, oh, yes, yeah, so super clean. It's not really right. <laughs> but the reason he wants us to do this is to allow everything to soak in. Can you see that okay? It's really kind of shiny with that light. And I think the problem was, I don't know what the problem was. I did something with the blinds. There we go. Is that better? That's better. All right. I'm going to just keep kind of smearing. Smearing, 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 smearing. That's good. That's good. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. So that's going to sit for a minute. And this is something that's super important for artists to remember is that um, sometimes you got to wait. That, the I don't wait that great, but this has to soak into the paper for this next part to really go well. So let's see. What does he say to do after that? It says start by putting in the yellow around the central area of the sky. Well, you notice that my yellow got a little messed up, right? Um, I 
like, that's okay. We can bring it back a little bit. I think. Can we bring it back? I'm just going to add some water. Sometimes I just get, I need more palette space. And when you do paint large, guess what you got to do? You got to really, um, this is a little bit more, what's the word? Not as lemony. But I can always add some of this. I'm just adding it in the center here. Um, just doing a little bit of fun. Just a little bit of fun. Then it says, um, your blue to the right and a large blob of paint spray to the left. Making sure you leave that area of light just off center in the sky. So, um, if you can see right here, is kind of what he's talking about. So we want to put some Payne's Gray over here and some of that blue over here. And I kind of mixed up my blue over here kind of bad. So let me see if I can bring back, I'll get some more different, some different. And see the blues don't have to be the same as his. They can be different. A little bit of that, a little bit of Payne's Gray. Look at that Payne's Gray. Love that. Look at how it spreads out. I love it. Okay, so I'm just getting... some of this going. This part is going to be fun because, I mean, it's already looking really pretty, I think. Um, yep, it's looking good. Let's see, I like adding just some of that Payne's Gray in there. I might go a little bit more to the edge there. Why not, right? No tape means go to the edge. So now, what I might do is just use a little bit of this tissue and make that kind of lighter. There we go. Like that. It's kind of pretty. And it looks like they did drop some of the yellow up in there. And see, what happens with me in tutorials is I end up doing my own thing, which is fine. I'm just going to play. You know me, I like to play. Um, so that's looking pretty. It's really looking, I thought. It doesn't look like his blues at all, but that's okay. I'm not, I'm not too persnickety. So he did draw his picture. I'm probably not going to draw my picture because I've done stuff like this before. So I'm going to do real, real light wash, real light wash. And just kind of a this is the river. I'm 
-hmm. Like that. That looks look pretty good. And so now he wants me to mix up some purple, which I do have some purple. Let me show you. Um, so here I have several purples, so we got to get them nice and wet. Whoops, nice and wet right here. So just drop some water. I like to mix both of these for some reason. Now you can do mix your own with um, blue and red, but since I already have purple on here, I'm going to mix it. And I'm going to make something right here. And I can add a little bit of that blue in there just to give it a cohesive look. So that's pretty much what he wanted. Um... So I don't know if we have to wait. Oh, you know, it says if you if you do it while your paper's still wet, it will have a misty feel to it. So we might do that. This does not look very purpley. That's okay. I think it's going to look good. I'm just going to add that in there. See how it's kind of bleeding up in there? Makes it kind of misty. I don't know if that's the kind of materials I want. There we go. So that looks pretty so far. Oh, Linda is saying you're watching but also cleaning your craft room. It was a hot mess after Christmas. Absolutely. My room is also very, very crazy at the moment as well. Um, but I pulled everything out of my office craft room and put it in the living, living room for a while. Then I had to do my stamping up open house and I moved everything in my bedroom and then now it's just kind of wherever some of it's still in the bedroom some of it's still in the living room it's just crazy huh all right so we're gonna look at what happens next um Yeah, I'm liking how that kind of looks. It looks pretty, but I want to kind of lighten that purple color. So I'm just going to add straight into that purple. And that looks kind of pretty. And I might lift. Sometimes I lift out just to add some cool areas. You see I'm just kind of lifting that with my brush, adding the clean water. Just let the water paint. The water does a lot. Now recently with that large painting I did a lot of erasing so I feel like I'm getting a lot of something in the painting right there. So I'm just trying to get rid of it. Um, and see, I'm just dragging my brush and getting rid of some of that and lifting it to make it lighter. Oh, I don't like the cauliflower right there. Got to stop that from happening. Stop. I don't want you. 
But sometimes when my paper's real wet, it just starts doing that kind of stuff. I don't know why. But, again, this is how we learn is by playing with stuff, right? If we don't play with our paints and our papers and our brushes, we're not going to learn how they work. Now, I'm not sure if I like that. We'll just leave it. I am finding all these little tiny hairs for some reason. Now, I know my cat got in here the other day, and I was so mad. I was like, do not go into my craft room. I feel like this needs a little darker up here. But look at how it's like so bleeding in there. It's like still really, really wet. And I could go in there with my heat tool. I really don't want to. Just want it to dry naturally, you know. So I might use some of this and just kind of just gonna dab that up just a little. That's looking really pretty. So just dropping, dropping that in just a little bit, just with that darker. And the thicker your paint, the more it'll kind of stay in there. So I'm kind of liking how that looks. Um, even though it's not the same colors as in his book that's okay it doesn't have to be um all right so now his next step is says do some purple um paint in the range of hills in the foreground but he already did his little sandy wash i need to do that so my sandy wash, I might already kind of have that. And I mixed it with some of that color right in here. And he said to use some yellow, red, blue to make the riverbank. Um, let me see what happens when I put this in there. Now I'm just going to go very lightly, kind of follow that. A little bit in here. Oops, I don't want to do that. But you know what? When we frame this, it's going to be fine. But I'll lift it up just for now. Put some more in here. That's starting to look kind of like a landscape, I think. Um, I'm starting to do my own thing. That's that's what's great about tutorials is that you can kind of start doing your own thing after a minute. But it's good to have a starting point, in my opinion. I don't know if that's like the right angle for that river, but that's okay. Yeah, it's okay. I can always lift up. And the lift up creates that. Check that out. Ooh, I like it. At least on the, on the computer. <laughs> Shrunk down. Looks great. <laughs> now, this is definitely doing some weird things with the paper and the wetness. But you know what? I might just leave it. I might just leave it. 
Why? Because it's really unique, something you can't create on your own. So, you know, it's kind of cool. Um, I'm letting this kind of set. I might add some of this purpley, purpley color down in here. Just for fun. Yeah, just for fun. And see, that's kind of giving it a shadowy color. Purples are like a shadow. So if you don't know what color to put on something, try purple. Yep. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I want to just let this dry. No, maybe. I might just let it dry. <laughs> and may add some more Greens gray up in here. Just for fun. Make that look kind of like dark, ominous clouds. Oh, thanks, Linda. Saying it looks really good. Yeah, it looks good on the screen. On the screen. Let's see if I move it. Oh, just so you can see the whole thing. Can you see the whole thing? Look at that. Oh, yeah. Now this horizon line is not straight, I'm noticing. So that's going to make me a little bit like, mm. but I'll probably end up going in there and fixing that. I gotta drink some more coffee. Um, but see, watercolors are just fun. I'm just having fun, y'all. This is really more about experimenting on this than it is to have some kind of work of art that's worthy of a museum because I've, I've often when I was young wanted to be like one of them artists that's in museums you know their artworks in a museum I've, I've been to museums I've seen where current artists are in there and they have their artwork shown and you know it's worth tens of thousands of dollars and it just makes me now I say, well, that's great. I'm happy for them. But that's not the only way to be successful as an artist. And like for me, I'm online now. I've been posting um, a lot of videos. And so posting a lot of videos means that I'm getting more traffic to my um, social media accounts. And in that aspect, I'm growing my audience and growing um you know who I'm reaching and hopefully I'm encouraging some artists out there who um maybe had this idea in their head that the only way to be successful is to be in a museum as an artist but um I follow a lot of different artists on Instagram and in YouTube and I'll just be honest, the way that they have been talking about art, it just inspires me because, like, for instance, Paul Clark, I mean, he has a book out and he has a YouTube channel. He does classes where he lives. He does um, lots of trips to different destinations. How fun is that? Um, and he sells his art. So... There's, there's a lot of ways to be successful. But again, there's a lot of ways to be scammed. So you want to be careful if you're an artist out there. Do not fall for the scams just because someone's like, oh, I love your art. Would, can I send you 400 bucks? Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes that's like, if it sounds too good to be true, it's too good to be true. So um, I'm kind of letting this sit you know watercolor 
you can dry it or you can wait. So for me, I'm gonna sort of wait just because I really, I don't know, I'm, I'm really excited to see what this is gonna do, just letting it dry completely natural. And um, this paper, I told you, this Arches paper, let me show you. So this stuff is more expensive than like Canson XL or Strathmore 400 series. Both of those are good. I've started out on those. They're really, um, you can check out one of my other videos about that where I compare painting um, the same scene on both of them just to give you a comparison, like which one's better. One's a little, you get oh, double the amount of paper for the same price. So I ended up just using that stuff. Um, but this, this is very high quality. And when I started using this more, I was like, I really like how this reacts to the water and to lifting and to everything that I'm doing on the paper. So I can get pretty rough and scrub it and all that. But Linda says, I gave you the arches. Oh yeah, you got it on sale. Thank you. Um, I keep waiting for it to go on sale again because I need more. So like this whole thing, I just took the last page out. And I have one that's not open, so I still have another. But this size is really good. Um, so let me, let me show you here. This size is 9 by 12 inch. And... This is not on a block, which sometimes it can be, um, it has that glue on the sides to keep it. Um, hot and cold. When did you give me hot and cold? Was this like a million years ago? The hot press has the pink. And I think there's also a rough, which is a different color too, but this is my favorite right here, cold press. Um... If you ever see it, you'll get it. Okay, thank you. Yes, I just went to Michael's not too long ago. Saw a bunch of stuff on the clearance aisle. I buy stuff when it's on the clearance aisle. It's great. It's awesome. Okay, so this is still very wet. Um, especially in this area. But, and look at all the cauliflowers. So, like some people don't really like the cauliflowers. I think they're kind of cool. I don't know. We're gonna we're just gonna let that do what it's doing and just not play with it anymore. But I'm feeling like I don't know. This is still really, really. Um, let me see if you can see this while I'm mixing. I like to show the mixing so y'all can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to get my purples, mix two purples together on here, add a little blue into that mix, add a little more purple. Okay, so this is a pretty good consistency. Um, I'm thinking about doing a workshop in person so we can all um, learn about consistency, about um, contrast, about color mixing, and about composition and it's going to be like an all-day workshop that I'm hoping to do in May. I need to still check with the church and see if they have availability Availability then. Um, so stay tuned for that. Maybe join my newsletter on my website which is www.stampinturtles.com and the stampin has no g in it. So all right, I'm gonna go in with this darker mountain range. Maybe put that a little higher. See how I concentrate, I get quiet. So I'm probably going to bring this down just a little bit to make that more straight. And sometimes you get that nice creamy. 
and through. Oh, that's looking good. I like it. All right, I like that. That's good. Um, so is it, I just read it real quick to make sure what I'm doing is going to be... Um, let's see, I have a little more of that pink right in my purple. I'm just going to add a couple little things in here like he did. And I'm going to make a little thickerness to that pink. Probably should use a smaller brush. So another thing that's really cool is the dry brush technique. So basically just kind of skimming that across. See how that's just making this kind of pretty, it skips across that paper. I'm just going to add some purple into here a little bit more to give that watery look. Oh yeah, that's looking good. It's looking good. Um, I'm gonna add some, I don't know if these are the bushes or what these are. And who knows where this landscape is, right? We don't know. It's somewhere in the mind of Paul Clark. <laughs> now this had some more of these little thingies. But I don't know. What do you think? Let's see, I can, um, do that. Darker areas. Um, put some more. And so we're just kind of playing right now. Just kind of playing with it. Oh, Lynn Balta, it's so pretty. Thank you. Um, this area in here, I'm going to add that kind of darker. some added contrast in there. See the darks and lights, how they play. We like that. That's what we want. See, that's still really wet in there, so it's kind of cool how it's doing what it's doing. It's kind of adding some kind of cool reflections in there. Um, this make it kind of thick in there and just kind of add that just kind of like that yeah 
correctly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now you're done. I don't know. You turn the page. He does add some splatters. You know me, I like splatters. Um, I need to use this though. I don't want to get all over. So I'm gonna use this kind of weird mixture. I'm gonna put this over the top and kind of splatter some right in there and some over here. Ta-da! And why do I do this? I like it, that's why I do it. You should always do something because you like to do it. Also, another thing I like to do is I get my little rigger and I do like this little kind of squiggly thing. And I don't know why, but I just like to do it. And so it's just very subtle, but it does kind of make something cool. But look what I did. Oh, what did I do? Well, I ended up splattering areas that I don't want splattered. But guess what you can always do since it's still really kind of wet in there. I can add birds. If I don't like it, I can add just like seagulls. But I actually was able to lift that, so it's good. Look at that. I'm just going to lift a little bit of that. Um, these splatters, I don't know. Do I like them? Maybe, maybe not. Um, might do a little bit more. Blue down in there. I hear my bell right outside my window there which is really cool. She's chewing her little bone. She's chewing her little bone. Let me see, I'm gonna do a couple more splatters. Lip splatters with a little brush. Oh my gosh, I like it. I love splatters, Linda said. Yes, splatters are the bomb. Oh my gosh, so look at that, and it's, how fast did I do this? Because I didn't even start till like, I don't know what time it was, painting, because I was chatting with y'all about the, the scammer dudes, scammer women, scammer men, scammer whoever, they're all over the place trying to take your money. So just remember, if you, if you're trying to sell something online, they will eventually get to you I'm sure and send you a message and say they like your artwork or they'll do something they'll do something to try and take your money um but we don't want them to take our money no nope. we want them to repent of their sins right so I actually looked up which was funny um I looked up Proverbs 26 and um 26, 24 through 26. So that's kind of funny that it's 26, 26. Um, oh, Linda said, so talented. Thank you. I love it that you think I'm so talented. God has really gifted me lately with my talents. I mean, the last three years painting watercolor, it's just been so much fun. I really enjoyed watercolor so much. Um, so, yeah, I like it. If you guys want to keep looking at the painting or you want to see my face, it don't matter to me. Um, uh, but, okay, so Proverbs 26. And it, verse 24. 
Um, so this version is ESV, and it says, Whoever hates disguises himself with his lips and harbors deceit in his heart. When he speaks graciously, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Though his hatred be covered with deception, his wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. So King Solomon, he prayed for wisdom and God granted him wisdom and tons of wealth and tons of brides, tons of everything. So the man was lacking nothing, but the thing was that he wrote a lot of the Proverbs, so um, we know that there's a lot of wisdom to Glenn from Proverbs. And sometimes I think this is what's crazy to me, is like people who are, they're just, they're, heaping a lot of um, praise on you and just saying how awesome you are. I would say definitely, I mean, be weary who it's coming from. Um, I know a lot of people, um, you know, their artwork is amazing. So, of course, everyone is praising their artwork. But then when you get someone online who's just like, your stuff should be, you know, worth four hundred, five hundred, six hundred dollars and I wanna send you money and just remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And like what I showed you in um in this, these little 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 keys here. Like, you know, send you pictures of cats and say it's a dog. Their name is spelt weird. Um they're they're just trying to find someone gullible enough to fall for their scam. And that's really sad. And I know, you know, I pray for everybody and I'm going to pray for the scammer for sure because God says we need to pray for them to repent. And I wish that this world was not full of scammers, but that's the sad thing. I know... Even my husband, Jeremy, was trying to sell something on the marketplace, Facebook marketplace. And it ended up, they wanted some kind of code. They said, I don't know if I trust you, so I'm going to send you a text and you send me the code and then I'll know you're real. So he did that and of course that was a scam to get access to his Google account. It's so crazy. Now they can become him. They can pretend to be him. And um, so that's something that I almost got scammed doing that too. But then when they kept insisting on me sending the code and I told them, I said, the text message says not to give this code out to anyone. And they kept saying, are you going to give it to me or not? And I was kind of like, not. And then I didn't hear from them again. So definitely if somebody really wants your art, you can be skeptical and say, I don't believe who you are and you need to prove it or something and check their Facebook account, check their online presence. Like I should have did that with that lady because then I would have been like, oh, I don't think this is real. But um, I mean, I don't want to be judgmental, but it did look like their account was fake. And Linda, you said it too. You looked her up. So it definitely looks gay, uh, fake. Okay, so here's what I'm going to show you all. Um, so let me see if I can put this straight on so we can see, see a comparison. So this is mine. This is mine and this is Paul's. Mine. And Paul's. I really like Paul's. But I like mine. It's really pretty. I like the um, the water in mine. I like the grassland in mine. Um, the sky is a little weird just because of those cauliflowers. But I think they're going to look kind of cool, to be honest. I think they're going to look good. Um, I could even dab some more, like, 
to dry it, but it's already kind of dry. It just needs to set. So I don't know. It's kind of cool. I like it. It's, it's artistic looking. It's very painterly, which is something I like. And then I'll say, oh, OMG about Jeremy. Yep, Jeremy um, fell for it. But I talked to Verizon. They said there's really nothing that they're going to do with it. You can change your password or something. I don't know. But that's one of those things where you're like, hmm, we live and learn. But hopefully they're not going to do anything with it. Um... So, but hey, it's 11 o'clock. What did you say? Where did you get the coffee cup? Okay, so this is little Jessica's mug. And it says inside, it says, Bonjour, Mon Amour. And it is really pretty. I got some paint on it from splattering. Um, but there's paint right there. Don't eat paint. But yeah, isn't that pretty? I really like it. Um, so Linda, I guess he's doing ceramics. Pottery. Um, Carla is doing that. And she made these cute little gnomes. I want her to like start a little website so she can sell her gnomes. She already sold them all out except for her Viking one. Um, but that one's so adorable too. Um, I think she would be really great at um, selling them even across the United States like so amazing um but yeah she started doing that at the kiln I think it's called the kiln I don't know it's in Fairhope so oh yeah yeah she's doing that so that's pretty cool I think um but hey so I guess our hour is up and I'm just so grateful that you were here today thank you for watching um, if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. Um, I, I'm going to be painting daily. And so today I'm starting a new series on flowers. So I have not painted anything yet. So stay tuned. Um, I may just go ahead and paint them now and then edit the video and post it later. Just so um, it can be done. And, you know, sometimes I don't do it till like 5 o'clock at night. Um, but I, I think I'm going to get this one done today. And so flowers are, you know, with Valentine's coming up, I think next week I'm going to do a heart series. But this week I'm going to do flowers because flowers are good for all seasons. You can do a painting of flowers for a card. You can do a painting of flowers as a gift for someone. Um, so they're very versatile. You can make bookmarks out of them. You can do a lot of things with painting flowers. So there's no specific um, season for flowers. They're just always beautiful and people like them. So I think I'm going to be doing flowers. So I'm not sure which one I'm going to do today. Might start with my favorite flower. And if you know my favorite flower, tell me in the comments. Um, most people that know me know that, know what my favorite flower is. Um, but I'm excited to watch this video back because I want to hear what it sounded like. And I'm so grateful that there was volume on this and there was people being able to hear. Because, um, let me show you real quick before I go. But there's my microphone. Do you see my microphone? It's hanging right there. I almost spilt water all over my desk. Um, but there's my painting, my desk, my microphone. I'm getting more and more high tech, so it's good. Um, and it's funny because I bought that microphone with a um, camcorder that I thought I was going to use as my main. You're right, Linda. You're right. Some flower. So I might do that first. Um, you do know my favorite flower. Um. So, anyways, I bought this microphone with a camcorder, and it was, like, legitimately 80 bucks for the whole kit, and um, the camera was not good. I didn't like the camera. It was very grainy and, and dark. I don't know. It just didn't look right when I filmed with it. Um, it was hard to edit with it and stuff like that going live. I just didn't even try it. So, 
but this is the microphone that came with it. So hopefully the sound was really good. Um, I noticed when I was using my MacBook last time, whenever I turned my head away from the MacBook, you wouldn't hear me as good. So I wanted something that was like right in front of me so that you could hear me better. Um, I know they have gaming little um, microphones you can put and wear like a headset, but um, I don't know, I don't have one of those, but anyways, this is working out for me. And so I really like how my painting turned out. It looks good, I think. Um, I'm just gonna let it dry, sign it, and frame it and sell it <laughs> to non-scammers. <laughs> So anyway, stay vigilant out there. Remember to just um, ask God for wisdom in dealing with a lot of these things. Pray for people. Oh, you're going to give me a call? Okay, as soon as I say goodnight, goodnight, <laughs> goodbye, then you can call me. Um, so yeah, this is, um, it's been a good conversation with y'all and I love you and I hope you all have a blessed day. Mwah. See you next time.